Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Bottoms. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hi. Welcome to Sisters Who Watch. I'm Shelby. And I'm Laura. And we're sisters who watch everything. TV, movies, sports, concerts, and even lesbian teen fight club movies. Yeah. We love to watch. (laughs) And we love talking about it even more. Today we're watching Bottoms. Bottoms. Emma Seligman's teen comedy. Ow, ow. Yeah, so tell us more about this director. Yes. Emma Seligman is an up-and-coming director. She's in her 20s, and this is her second feature film. Her first movie, Shiva Baby, which was based on a short film that she did, came out a few years ago and premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, which is a really big deal. And that was so successful. And also starred Rachel Sennett, who's PJ in Bottoms. So after Shiva Baby, she worked on Bottoms, which is actually something that she wrote with Rachel years ago when they were students at NYU together. Okay. Crazy. And Bottoms premiered this year at South by Southwest Film Festival. So Emma's clearly familiar with the festival circuit. And it got really rave reviews and then was released by MGM in August. Thank you for that background. Of course. Look at those NYU connections. And also, Io Edibri also went to NYU. They all were classmates. Which you love to see. I feel like you don't hear about that often. People being no. classmates and then working on movies together. I love it. Keep in touch with those classmates. You could all star in a feature film someday together. I know. Let me go on my contacts right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did you come in expecting? What were your expectations with this movie? Well, a few people in LA, like former co-workers, friends, had mentioned they had seen Bottoms at like early screenings or festivals and raved about it. So I had heard really good things. So knew I wanted to see it. Of course, Iota Berry, who we love from The Bear, is in it. So I wanted to support her as well. What did you know? Right. I really didn't know much. Um, This came out uh, the $4 movie weekend. Shelby knows the exact praise national movie theater day that's it Uh, so i went that day and this was the best movie in the box office that weekend i think there was also blue beetle and i know a lot of people saw barbie and oppenheimer that weekend too but i was like what i haven't seen what has been getting good reviews and that was bottoms and plus as if you have listened to our podcast in the past we are fans of io edibri you know star of the bear Abbott Elementary cameo and she also voices one of the characters on Big Mouth so she's popping up in all these really popular shows so we were excited to see her as a leading woman in a big movie so even though this is like an indie comedy it was super exciting to see it get a wide release in theaters and to star such a diverse up-and-coming cast we love to see it and the movie theater was packed and of course it was the, you know, the $4 movie day, but I got the one of the last seats in the whole theater and Shelby, you couldn't even see it that weekend. Oh, I was telling everyone about National Movie Theater Day and somehow forgot to get my tickets in advance. So the time I wanted to see Bottoms on that Sunday, it was sold out everywhere in LA. I Ouch. was so annoyed. So I had to see it on discount Tuesdays, end up paying $7 instead of four. Annoying, but it's not bad. Yeah, you know, $7 for movies, pretty good. And even when I saw it on Tuesday, it was full. Like, uh-huh. I was surprised. People were coming out to see it. And people are still talking about it. So I think there's a good amount of buzz. Yes. Which Word is great mouth, to see. For sure. Because, like we talked about, this is a summer of the girl, right? And to have a woman director, a movie people are talking about, and, you know, packing movie theaters, that's a big deal. Huge. That's a really big deal. I am just excited that we have like a young female skewing diverse movie getting right. a wide release in theaters that people are supporting. It doesn't happen exactly. often. So we got to celebrate it while we can. Exactly. Especially compared to all the, you know, kind of OG teen sex comedies of the 2000s that we grew up with, you know, like American Pie, Super Bad, like not another teen movie. And of course, you know, Mean Girls, John Tucker Must Die. Yes. You know, movies that were 
that tend to be more male centered and it's like men trying to lose their virginity in high school and Rooted lots of sex jokes lots of stereotypes problematic etc right so didn't age well <laughs> exactly movies that did not age well but i feel like the this movie bottoms and a lot of these other recent teen high school comedies are a lot smarter and wittier and not problematic you know they're yes. not relying on stereotypes to make the sex no, joke right? they're more diverse so movies like book smart or ladybird or blockers way more creative auteur unique than super bad for example I definitely think Bottoms is even more of a unique story than those movies. Yes. Very unique. I <laughs> we I personally had never seen a movie like that. I agree. And I love myself a unique movie. I feel like Hollywood's lacking in having unique creative oh, yeah. movies. Reboot, just, reboot, reboot. Literally. That's all they do. Spinoff, prequel, you name it. As long as it's based on IP, they'll do it. So it's cool right. to have something like this that is original unique a bit of a genre blender that we just haven't seen before on our screens and coming in i read the synopsis it's like oh they create a fight club to you know lose their virginity and it's like a raunchy sex mm-hmm. comedy and i was like oh okay interesting but i did not think i did not think after watching it that it was you know a raunchy sex movie it, it was so much more than that. Agreed. And I think that's a great transition to our themes. Of course, woman empowerment was yes. at the center of this film. I love how even though the initial purpose of the Fight Club wasn't about female empowerment, that it became that. <laughs> right. Evolved from like a sex club to a like female empowerment club and realizing that through this Fight Club, We can defend ourselves and we can support each other and we have found community. I think it wasn't your typical women's empowerment movie. Definitely not. Yeah, it was such a unique story. I you didn't know what was gonna happen. I was taken on a roller coaster of emotions, storylines, but in a good way. Unlike Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, as we talked about, where it was a roller coaster all the time. A whirlwind, but that did not come together. This came together. It was a roller coaster I was enjoying. That's what I'll say. So yes. <laughs> yes. And another big theme was gender roles and stereotypes, of course, right? It's this feminist fight club. And that itself is very, you know, bending the gender roles. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, typically women aren't, you know, violent like men and they're not fighting, but here they were just beating each other up every single day and they come home with all these scars on their face and parents were like what is going on at this school um so it was cool to see that how they were empowering each other through just beating each other up which Mm -hmm. you rarely see and of course we have to talk about the football players who were just stereotypes on stereotypes on stereotypes oh my goodness they wore the football uniforms 24 7 Never took them off. Never took in them the off. car, in their house, in the hallway, in Lunch. class. It was crazy. They <clears throat> could barely speak. Oh yeah. Jeff would be like, "I'm Jeff." It was giving Ken from Barbie. Oh, he had 100%. big energy. Yeah, Jeff footballs and Ken beaches like that's beach yes. is football. Jeff is Ken. Yeah, exactly. So I think I thought it was funny how. At the end, the women were the ones fighting, saving the day, and the football players were helpless. They were the damsels <laughs> in distress. You rarely yes. see that. So again, flipping those gender yeah. roles and stereotypes. The football players that everyone loves, everyone in the school is obsessed with Jeff. He's, you know, the savior. Everyone loves him, but he is going to be killed by pineapple juice unless these girls come and save him. And his teammates didn't what? even do anything. They just all sat there while these girls were beating up the other that school. That was the crazy part. It's like they were scared. They're like, girls got it. We're going to sit over like, here. What? Classic. Woman having a step in and save the day. Ugh, Constant always. theme throughout all the content we watch. Every, every movie, single movie. Every TV Every show. single one. Women saving the day. Classic. It's exhausting. Hard out here. 
the stereotypes of the football players were very funny um and disturbingly true <laughs> so on to our favorite moments what yes. stood out to you shelby right off the bat i thought it was funny how we were introduced to josie and pj they decide to go to the school kickoff fair they didn't really want to go but they go and josie and pj try to flirt with their crushes isabel and Brittany goes badly try to give <laughs> them food they don't want food try to make conversation it's super awkward like it was just so funny to me and you get a really good sense of who Josie is who PJ is and that they're gonna struggle to win over these women right off the bat I'm like they're in for a long journey <laughs> yes they give cringe Gen Z teen culture yes. which I think felt very real and we're mm-hmm. wearing bucket hats in honor of uh Gen, Gen Z. Z teenagers. It felt like a very honest portrayal and mm-hmm. depiction of teens in that awkward phase. Because they, they felt so real to me. I'm like, yeah, that seems like actual teenagers would be acting like this at a fair, saying all these awkward things, not knowing how to talk to anyone besides themselves. It was really funny. So the acting was great. The jokes were great. Because even though the movie was so absurd and bizarre, it was rooted in this reality of awkward teen gen z's not knowing how to navigate their queerness and you know growing up and love relationships right so it Mm. felt very authentic completely agree i'm not gen z so i can't say that's exactly how gen z behaves but it felt like it you know it's great (laughs) with our bucket hats we're channeling we're trying trying to be gen z (laughs) and another scene i know we both loved was when josie was trying to gal the parking lot isabel hopped in the back of the car and she tapped jeff on the leg with her car (laughs) and jeff had a breakdown yeah he and the football players reacted so crazy the next day there's rumors spreading that josie beat up jeff jeff's using crutches like it was so absurd because he barely was touched but he was very dramatic made it seem like a big deal the whole school felt bad for Jeff and thought Josie was a bully so crazy (laughs) yeah that was wild once that happened I was like oh this is where the movie's going like this movie is off the rails reality is out the window this is the realm we're in that was the moment where I was like okay I'm in for a wild ride (laughs) completely agree And and another like super absurd character was mr g marshawn lynch we loved every time he was on screen every time he's really going from nfl player to actor i don't know how much he's acted in this is the first thing i've seen him in same but i think he has a future he was very funny 100 percent. he was just as funny if not more funny than every other actor in the movie right he was and so good. I watched a cast video where they all talked about filming the movie and all of them said Marshawn was the funniest on set. So clearly he, it's it comes to him naturally. And a lot of his lines and scenes were imp- improvised. So he truly mm. is a comedian. Yeah, cast him in more. I want to see Marshawn Lynch in more yes. stuff. I'm here for it. Marshawn the actor. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, possible Oscar noms. We'll see. Ambitious? <laughs> Supporting actor. <laughs> you should uh, start that campaign. Yeah, now. I'll start the campaign. He was a star. I, I was shook at how good he was in the movie. And I also loved all the Fight Club scenes because they were just so bizarre, so strange. And Josie and PJ are such clowns, right? In the best and worst ways because they had no idea what they're doing. They're like, okay, so how are we going to start learning self-defense? And PJ was like, just start, just start hitting each other. And they're like, this, this is not how you're, you're not going to teach us to how to throw a punch? No. It was just like jumping into it. It was just like, no, just start kicking and punching and scratching and that's it. And it was so bizarre. They but had no pads, no protective gear. No, no mats on the floor. It was <laughs> very dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. But the girlies, they loved it. They were, they were smiling. I was surprised. And they all got better. Mm -hmm. And it was just so funny seeing them, you know, punch each other, get more reluctant, and then start really whacking and kicking. 
and them fighting back and I really love those scenes they were so funny seeing yeah. them you know learn these different skills and get kicked and get back up and all of it I mm-hmm. loved it and they all actually learned how to fight at the end <laughs> somehow some way <laughs> crazy you know me I'm a rom-com girly yes, so she is. I like the romantic moments of the movie there weren't too many but obviously the premise of the fight club was so Josie and Isabel could meet hot girls and hopefully date them so I like that Josie and Isabel eventually form a friendship and bond that leads to them kissing it was so sweet I was like we love a love story and it seemed to me like a better match than PJ and Brittany you know how PJ yeah. was obsessed with Kai Gerber's character? Like that just didn't seem right. But no. Josie and Isabel felt more of like a natural connection. I agree. It was kind of it was funny seeing PJ fall on her face, and um, Much Kai Gerber deserve. was like, "Um, uh, I'm I'm straight." <laughs> that was so embarrassing. That was rough. Yikes. That was rough. Yeah, and another truly wild scene was when the girls they all got together and they found out that jeff cheated on isabel with hazel's mom what that was just everything about that was too much Did not and they're like let's go tp jeff's house let's go egg his house and hazel the the baddie she is she creates a bomb <laughs> somehow still don't know how to be a mom a little bizarre and she bombs Jeff's car. She took it a step too far. Yeah. I definitely appreciate the loyalty and support of Isabel, but bombing is off limits. <laughs> I think the TPing and the egging was just fine. Yeah, that was plenty. The, the bomb yeah. was a lot. And it gave the football guys literally oh. even more ammunition oh. to hate the fight club. And that really put a target on their backs and they were doomed especially after that bomb went off literally and uh, the final football fight scene i mean i don't know if i've seen a scene a movie like that before i that was so bizarre it turned action combat thriller horror it was a bit gory like right i was shocked shocked yes yeah, I I don't think anyone anticipated the movie would end no, that way. Yeah. It felt like Gladiator. It felt like a war movie that ended in this, you know, ultimate fight. And it was giving epic instead of yes. teen rom-com. So uh-huh. it was really interesting to end the movie that way. Seeing the girls who had been dogged by the football players the whole time have to go in and save them. Save Jeff, who was the worst human. <laughs> and they save him and the rest of the team crazy i was i was a little upset i was like why are you helping them they were so horrible to you but they go low we go yes exactly in the words of michelle obama but seeing that at the end it was really cool it was really fun it was so funny it was a really unique final scene so it was a nice way to end it everything really came together yes in a strange way it felt poetic (laughs) Yeah, because I it showed that. the girls they learned they took the skills they learned from their fight club right they worked together and they came together as a team right to save these boys who dogged them the whole time so they saved the day and they worked together and they used their fight club skills what more can you <laughs> ask for exactly very smart way to end the movie yes but what were some of your least favorite moments Oof. and bottoms to be honest there aren't many because spoiler alert we like the movie yeah <laughs> if you couldn't tell already i have to say josie lying about going to juvie and in general all the lying that josie and pj did in the beginning it was Why? truly their demise it was they did not need to come up with an elaborate story about how they know how to fight in order to have a fight club you could have just been like we're trying to protect ourselves let's have a fight club and it got out of hand everyone thought they went to juvie everyone thought josie killed someone that it come back to life and she was like a a baddie that they both spent the summer in juvie just didn't make any sense what was tough is that eventually it got out that they lied and it was so sad when 
Isabel found out that Josie had lied about Judy yeah. because they'd already kissed, they had bonded, and they felt really connected. So it was a betrayal. It was awful. Yeah, that was a hot mess. Like I mentioned before, Josie and PJ were clowns. Did not they created 90% of the mess themselves, you know? Yeah. So they created a bad situation for themselves, the rest of the fight club, right? They got Hazel beat up. And that Ooh. was another one of my least favorite moments. Like so bad. their lying led to Hazel having to fight this huge football dude, this huge wrestler. At the pep rally. Right? It was horrific. That was really hard to watch. That was a tough scene. And it's all because of Josie and PJ's shenanigans. That's why you don't lie, people. It'll come back and haunt you. That is true. And Tim, like, Life exposing lessons. um the girls in the fight club at the pep rally was so weird. I, I didn't like Tim. He was just, like, sneaky and yeah. just trying to take down the fight club no matter what. It was so weird. Agree. Didn't like Threatened. Him. Threatened much? For sure. He wanted to be popular. And as the fight club got more popular, he was like, whoa. We gotta can't have this. these girls being more popular than the football team. No, no, no. Toxic. Can't have that. <laughs> so toxic. Ready to ditch that J-O-B and become your own boss? Listen to the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast for daily advice on how to start and grow your business. Hosted by yours truly, Felicia Fricasi, owner of Fricasi Lashes and the Blow Dry Lounge and a bunch of Airbnbs. I'll show you how I made my first million and teach you how to do the same. New episodes streaming daily at beautybossmillionaire.com and wherever you listen to your podcast. It's time to boss up. Okay, who or what did you love to hate in this movie? Well, we've already said it. PJ and Josie were clownish at many points throughout the film. Yes. Classic main characters. They had Classic. highs and lows. But at the end, I was still rooting for them. Yes, they created the fight club for the wrong reasons. Yes, they lied to everyone. Yes, they were very selfish at times and blaming each other for the demise of the fight club. But at the right. end... Their friendship stood the test. They reconnected. They were able to come together, join forces, and save the day. Very true. Yeah, they're pretty toxic, very clownish. But at the end of the day, I guess, they brought uh, this group together yeah. that really did make a meaningful impact on mm -hmm. a bunch of different girls' lives. So yes. that was positive. And they ended up saving the day, um, despite their lying and shenanigans. Yes. <laughs> In the end, I think there was a net positive. If you don't count murder as a negative. Uh-huh. That's why they're in love to hate. That's exactly. why they're in love to hate. So they saved the day, but they murdered like a whole football team. So like, yeah. But we're not in reality. We're not in Exactly. Reality. This is a absurdist Gen Z <laughs> high school that we are just exactly. living in. Exactly. And Fancy. someone else we both love to hate was Mr. G marshawn yes. lynch he's the definition of a problematic king it's so funny he was hilarious every time he was on screen i was laughing but i know laura you were mentioning he did say some problematic things at times i know it seems like he was flip-flopping on women's rights every day it just depended you know what pj and josie said one day how he was feeling how his girl did him dirty he was like this is why you can't trust women and then the other day he'd be like this is why women deserve rights yeah. it was just so bizarre <gasps> but he was hilarious like we said funniest character Funny give this funny. man a comedy series i'm yes. here for it i he was right the star, teacher the standout for me 100 percent. i'm on board and who did you hate to hate in Bottoms? Soccer. It's the dumb football players. Jeff and Tim. Tim and basically and the whole day. All, all the of them. Yeah. They were so over the top, dramatic, stereotypical, which was the point. They were like caricatures almost, like not real people. Right. And it was just nothing redeeming about them. Nothing. They were funny to see them act like Jeff and his injury but they were mean at the end of the day jeff cheated on isabel and tried to win her back tim made hazel get beat up at the end in the pep rally like they weren't good people yeah they were horrible and 
it, they didn't even seem grateful that the girls helped them in the end yeah it was just they and plus they didn't even they didn't help them no they were like oh i guess the girls got it and they just let them take on a whole football team of guys trying to attack them so nothing redeeming no redeeming qualities yeah. who did you love to love i love to love hazel i thought that hazel was the most grounded person throughout Right. trying to actually have a real fight club and plan lessons and keep people organized yeah. trying to encourage pj and josie as they were trying to figure out what to do for the fight club and yes hazel gets beat up at the end and kind of turns on the group and walks out and gets mad at them but reunites at the end with all of them and honestly was brought them back together because it was once hazel got beat up that all of them came to hazel's rescue Right. Like, you know what? The fight club, there's more to it. It's this community. That is like the big takeaway from the fight club. And they were there for Hazel at the end, which I like. Definitely. Yeah, Hazel was probably one of the only pure characters yes. in the film. Unproblematic. She stayed loyal. She was not problematic. She was just a good friend. And she stood up for all the girls in the fight club. And she was a secretary. She was actually trying to get things done in the fight club. Really? But Josie and PJ were just trying to, trying to clown around. So Hazel for granted. 100%. She fought that wrestler guy to defend the fight club. It was just, yeah, she deserved better. Well, she did set off two bombs. So that was problematic. You know, <laughs> Besides as, that. as you say that, those were red flags. Yeah. But if you ignore that, clearly a love to love. Yes, if you forget the bombs, she was a 10 out of 10. So, yeah, we both like Hazel. We both like Hazel. We also, uh, in Love to Love, have Isabel here, who also oh. seemed very pure, very sweet, kind-hearted, but she was just with the wrong people. She was with Jeff, this horrible guy who treated her like garbage. Agreed. It was nice to see her evolution from the popular girl hanging out with Brittany all the time, dating the star football player, and then dumping Jeff and building new friendships and community, hanging out with people that aren't as popular. Like she definitely had a big arc. And it right. was cool to see her also kind of find herself. Like, yeah, I actually want to be part of a fight club and believe in myself and do other things just besides being popular. Totally. <clears throat> I totally agree. Okay. On to red flag, green flag. One, two, three. Laura, is it a red flag to get back with your cheating ex like Isabel did with Jeff? Yes. <laughs> Tell us 100%. Why. Yes. Um, I think that it depends. But if you're not married to this person, if you don't have children with this person, I think it is a red flag. You're not attached to them. Get out. Get out. There's so many other people you can be with. It is not worth it to be with someone who has cheated on you. So, especially with Isabel and Jeff, he was the worst. And he had been cheating on her multiple times with many yeah. women. And he was just, there was no reason for her to get back with him. It was just really sad to see that. I think a lot, it happens a lot. Like a lot of girls are like, well, you know, I love him and it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. He promised he'll never do it again. But if, I, if you don't have any attachments to this person, right, you're not married, you don't have kids, it varies, but red flag, don't get back with a cheating ex. No. I'm aligned, especially if that cheating ex is Jeff. Yes. He's like some of the earth. Yes. Not worth it. Girl. Especially in high bye. school, girl, move move on. Move on. Move to on. Left, You'll find left. someone. <laughs> you are not irreplaceable, Jeff. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, Shelby, is it a green flag to do almost anything to get your crush to notice you? No, I think it's a red flag. Oh. PJ and Josie literally changed their personalities, lied about what they did to try and get Isabel and Brittany to like them. That's crazy. You should not change who you are and put on a persona and lie to try and date someone. It no. just doesn't compute. 
they should want to be with you for you you know they're lost if they don't want you bye right mistake on their part but don't try and change yourself and i do think that happens but not the right way to go about starting a relationship or trying to be with somebody 100 percent, i agree doing anything to get someone to notice you i also i also feel like being pursued like why are you trying to you know break your neck and do all these things to get someone to notice you You, like you should be noticing me already so period facts oh right is bottoms a weight or a watch 100% 100% watch. It was a refreshing, unique YA comedy that I was pleasantly surprised by. I also love that it's from a young, diverse filmmaker with a fresh voice. We need more like young talent. We need more fresh perspectives. Yes. So I definitely think everyone should go watch it. It's still in theaters right now. will eventually be on the streaming. Go support. 100%. And like you said, I agree. It's definitely a watch. And we need to support these movies, right? Because if we don't support them, they're going to be like, well, people don't want to see, you know, queer stories. People don't want to see woman-led stories. People don't want to see woman-directed projects. So mm-hmm. we got to go support this. I'm happy that when we both saw it, the theater was packed because, you know, it's an indie comedy, right? Mm-hmm. Those aren't the most flashy movies no. that everyone's trying to go see. So it's encouraging that people are still talking about it. So we got to go keep on supporting um, because I really enjoyed it. I'd never seen a movie like it. It was super creative and it was so funny. I was laughing. Yes, the whole time. If you want to laugh, see bottoms. Go see it. I totally agree. On to our what to watch segment. What are we looking forward to related to bottoms and all the actors, directors? Yes hopefully there's potential oscar buzz for bottoms it probably wouldn't be in the best picture category you know never say never but for me i could see best original screenplay i thought the script was really great written by rachel and emma and i could just see it slipping in there especially given the strikes and movies being pushed there might be like more room for like yeah. up and coming writers and content like this totally i agree such a unique script i would love to see it be nominated and who knows marshall lynch let's start the campaign best supporting actor let's go never say never <laughs> <laughs> what a plot twist who would thought we would we would be talking about marshall lynch as an actor not me never not just me. the skittles loving running back for the nfl I'm here so I don't get fined. Iconic. Okay, what else? Hopefully we see a collab from the uh, NYU alums. This was such a great um, team effort. Yes. And like we said, Aya was on the rise. She's popping up in everything these days. Yes. And she's actually going to be in Marvel's Thunderbolts next year. Marvel! You know when you book a Marvel movie, your star is rising. Your star, once you enter the Marvel universe. Well, some people are saying that Marvel is falling off. Yeah, so, oh, let's see how it goes. But hoping for the best that this will be good for Io's career. Yes, I know. We're hoping that this does well because we want Io to yes. continue to crush and everything she does. Exactly. So, thank y'all for yes, watching and you. listening to us. We love this movie and we're hoping that you love this episode. If you did, please leave us five stars. It means a lot on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And follow us so you get updates on our episodes. And make sure you check us out on all social medias at Sisters Who Watch on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn. Everywhere. 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 And go to our website, sisterswhowatch.com. Yes, and let us know what we should watch next. You can email us at sisterswhowatch at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram. We want to hear from y'all. Yes, you can also check our YouTube channel. We're everywhere. Go check us out. Go contact us. We want to hear from y'all. Thank you so much for listening, and we appreciate your support. Yes, thank you. Bye, everything. Stay watching.